thank you. Welcome back to our uh, third and last day of the workshop. And today we have actually three sessions, interdisciplinarity and isolation scientific progress, then power and social capital in science and academia, and we close with funding and scientific progress. So we start now with the first speaker. I left the floor to the chair of the morning, Paolo Tifodi. Sorry about love to uh, please. Welcome everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so uh, we start today um, with Professor Wolfgang Grenzel. Um, everybody knows him here. Um, he's the editor in chief of Scientometrics and uh, published a lot on Scientometrics, on all these all quantitative methods. Uh, and um, he, he, he was awarded. The, the Solar Prize Memorial in 1999, as you as you know. Um, today, he, he will open uh, this morning session um, with a, uh, a talk, and we thank uh, Professor Glenzel for, for being here. Uh, the title of the talk is The Centrometrics of Interdisciplinarity from Concept to Measurement, and I leave the floor to our first speaker. Thank you. Oh, uh, uh, I'll see you after when okay. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Oh, I need the microphone probably. Yes, thank you very much. Um, yes, uh, good morning, everybody. I will report about uh, scientometrics um, of interdisciplinarity. Uh, you might wonder how this uh, com comes into the picture of um, uh, yeah, philosophy meets um, quantitative science studies. But it's just uh, the complexity I would uh, to highlight, like to highlight today, which has a lot of uh, uh, philosophical perspectives. On one hand, on the other hand, uh, I will apply uh, this model, so to speak, also to um, the analysis of uh, interdisciplinarity and uh, uh, philosophy research. It's just a, a small example, but uh, um, I will show that. Okay. Um, first, uh, that's the structure of the presentation. I uh, try to embed uh, the whole thing into this uh, into uh, duality phenomena. That's the context, actually, because uh, interdisciplinarity is only one uh, side of the coin. The other side of the coin will be uh, highlighted and shown by Pai Shan after my presentation. It's isolation. Um, there are a lot of such uh, dualities in um, in science, it's just the one of this, and uh, uh, but the one of the inter uh, most interesting one, maybe. Um, the second uh, part uh, is a, a, a set of uh, chapters uh, how to approach uh, interdisciplinarity um, by means of uh, uh, scientometrics or bibliometrics. First chapter is about interdisciplinarity, just uh, to give uh, a summary of uh, the uh, characteristics of interdisciplinarity. The second one is the conceptualization, uh, followed by subject classification, granularity, quantification and measurement, and uh, finally, possible issues and limitations. So these are the steps and uh, paces we have to, to take when we uh, um, launch some interdisciplinarity uh, studies um, by um, bibliometric means. So uh, first, I have to um, make an acknowledgement, acknowledgement um, that the background of uh, the studies we had a, a five-year uh, medium-term project of five years. Um, it was called interdisciplinarity and impact. It was uh, supported and financed uh, by the Flemish government, and um, it's not uh, only my um, results. I will show here. It's uh, it's of course a teamwork. Um, um, uh, by Conrad de Bacquerel, Bartheis, both are from uh, ECOM, from uh, my institute. Uh, also, we had uh, collaborators and guest um, uh, researchers at ECOM, like uh, Yin Huang, like uh, Jiang Wang, like uh, Lin Zhang, and uh, finally also Ronald Rousseau, who is also affiliated with um, 
the faculty at Kaolöben. Okay. Uh, something about uh, the duality phenomena in science. Okay. Um, so, um, how to depict and measure them? So, if uh, something, a, a coin has two sides, of course, we have uh, to capture both sides of the coin, but we have also to distinguish. Eh? So, how to depict and uh, to measure that? So, um, we have to view science from different perspectives, such as information science, sociology, and philosophy, that allows considering different aspects of the same phenomenon, even detecting duality. So, and just some examples, one is uh, divergence uh, versus coalescence, uh, that has also been uh, partially tackled by us. Of course, very famous mm -hmm. is uh, the duality of uh, collaboration versus competition. So, um, um, and finally here, I would like to highlight isolation versus interdisciplinarity. I will also say at the end, if the time allows, uh, something about uh, uh, the granularity, which is the uh, duality of holistic view versus detail view, huh? which is a very interesting thing, uh, which has also a strong uh, philosophical uh, perspective. Uh, but this is a topic, a topic as such uh, that uh, would deserve uh, another hour of discussion um, and maybe for the next occasion. Um, okay. Um, Again, uh, how to depict and measure duality phenomena, so shedding light from different uh, perspectives, identifying different manifestations, that's very important of the phenomena in the study, and using interdisciplinary methods with their respective concepts to study those may result in new insights with different interpretation, but may also bring along further consequences. So here it's very important that we are faced with uh, different manifestations of interdisciplinarity we have uh, to distinguish and we have to compare and we have to highlight. Um, and um, scientists actually know about positive and negative consequences of using different perspectives from the, um, the most prominent example is the citation, huh? where we have um, uh, different um, 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 use of citations in different contexts, which sometimes even um, contradict. Um, so we hope that the two uh, contributions we will present today, that by Paishan and by me, will help gaining better insights in the duality of in the isolation and interdisciplinarity. Um, okay, and as I mentioned, I will use uh, the example of um, academic philosophy uh, analyzed by bibliometric means. Now, about interdisciplinarity. I don't want to um, read this out. Uh, this is the response um, by the Royal Society to the British Academy Scores of, uh, for evidence of interdisciplinarity. This just uh, uh, substantiates um, the weight and the importance of interdisciplinarity in um, uh, contemporary research uh, and the, the challenges um, of science and society. Okay. Um, we have, of course, to delineate interdisciplinarity from other forms of disciplinarity, so to speak. Uh, the most um, important one might be interdisciplinarity uh, versus multidisciplinarity. Uh, and there are some um, yeah, definitions of uh, interdisciplinarity and multidisciplinarity. There's a very nice table published by Choi and Park in 2006, which is uh, worthwhile uh, reading where um, the uh, distinction between um, interdisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity, and multidisciplinarity, of course, also monodisciplinarity is given. Um, um, but the most important thing is that there is sometimes some con confusion, even among uh, uh, bibliometricians, uh, how uh, to avoid uh, to the sketch 22, if you look at higher levels of aggregations like journals or departments, for instance, and you look for interdisciplinary research in journals or uh, conducted by, by departments or divisions of institutions and universities, uh, you might be faced with a problem that uh, you uh, might uh, depict uh, multidisciplinarity at that level of the um, aggregation because you have really to go down to the units. Huh? of researcher, of individual article to avoid that. Uh, otherwise, you might, uh, for instance, uh, consider a journal 
and characterize it as uh, interdisciplinary, also it's just multidisciplinary because the articles published there all deal with different fields. Huh? This is not interdisciplinary. Discipline, interdisciplinary would be if this journal really publish, publishes interdisciplinary articles, huh? like for instance, scientometric. So uh, that is a, a, a bit of problem that you have need also a breakdown to the uh, to the units, uh, to uh, to the micro, even to the nano level. Sometimes you have to look into the individual papers and uh, split the paper into canonical sections huh? to identify interdisciplinarity. So then you can be sure that you are not confusing that with multidisciplinarity because at that at that level uh, it, it's very hard to publish uh, something uh, some multidisciplinary results. Huh? So um, this is quite important. Um, and this is also very seldom uh, uh, mentioned that there are several types of interdisciplinarity. I uh, distinguish two major types. One is the analytical one, the other one is the synthetical one. What is analytical? That means um, you use methods from other fields, not only methods, but also maybe devices huh, from other fields to understand underlying structures, mechanisms, or to process and analyze data related to phenomena under study. Huh? Uh, typical, um, um, typical analytical um, inter, uh, interdisciplinarity is, for instance, uh, the application of um, um, advanced um, imaging uh, tools or imaging a method um, to uh, to read uh, uh, text in, in, in ancient scrolls, for instance, in, in um, invasive, uh, uninvasive uh, way to do so without uh, destroying the material. Huh? So uh, years and decades ago, you had to, uh, to open the scroll and you damaged uh, actually the scrolls. Um, this is one point. Another point is a, a very traditional one is C14, for instance, in archaeology or other um, uh, methods to determine um, the age of, of, of bones or of uh, wooden material, uh, which is a kind of analytical interdisciplinarity because it forces uh, scientists in these fields, archaeology, for instance, to use methods uh, from other uh, fields and that uh, results in kind of interdisciplinarity. The other one is synthetical. It's the adoption integration from or migration of methods to other contexts and fields. Huh? That is different. Huh? Um, where you really uh, bring two fields together because you have jointly to, to solve a result and you both uh, contribute uh, uh, with uh, their own methods. Uh, some case, uh, for instance, is uh, full range research. Huh? Full range uh, is, is, uh, is um, is C60, for instance, uh, the bucket um, balls uh, can be studied from the viewpoint of uh, chemistry or physics or engineering. And um, there is also some synthetic rules in, in nanoscience, for instance, where these uh, fields use uh, their methodologies together to, to apply uh, the material to their needs. Okay. Um, manifestations, and this is a bit uh, more tricky. You have uh, actually, I will show three manifestations here. Uh, um, um, interdisciplinarity is uh, very frequently uh, characterized by collaboration of researchers with different skills, qualification or scientific background. And these uh, manifestations can be affiliations, professional backgrounds, for instance. Huh? Um, but that can also be materialized by a single researcher. Huh? There are a lot of researchers with different backgrounds. Huh? Uh, even in bibliometrics, uh, look at uh, Thibaut Brown, who was a chemist, and um, he was also an information scientist, or um, have a look at uh, the Solar Price, for instance, or even Jean Garfield and others who have um, different uh, skills and backgrounds. Um, but uh, also outside, of course, information science, you find, find, find many examples for that. Um, we uh, here will uh, view interdisciplinarity research uh, or interdisciplinary research from the perspective of knowledge integration. That's the approach uh, that has been described, um, among others, by Raffles and Meyer in uh, 2010. Um, 
and uh, diffusion across disciplines uh, like uh, new in um, 2012. Mm, the uh, knowledge is associate, associated with different subjects and scientific disciplines. Uh. So, um, we, uh, if we would like to understand and interpret uh, interdisciplinarity, acronym is IDR here. So uh, that there has to stand on the following pillars. First is the conceptualization. Yeah? So we have to define um, interdisciplinarity and we have to delineate it from, for instance, multidisciplinarity, transdisciplinarity, cross-disciplinarity. We um, need to apply uh, uh, an appropriate approach to link uh, research to disciplines. Uh, and that's, not, uh, that's absolutely not obvious how to do that. Uh, we have, of course, uh, to define um, disciplines, except for coherence, we, we don't do need that uh, beforehand, but uh, in most cases we do have to do that. That means we need a proper subject classification scheme and the granularity for subject assignment. And the granularity uh, issue is of uh, paramount importance and we will frequently come back to that uh, later. And of course, we need the subject assignment. So once we have that, uh, such a scheme, so we have to assign uh, the actors and the items, uh, and that means the documents, for instance, to the solution at the uh, chosen granularity level to the subject. And then finally, in the fourth step, we can come to the quantification and measurement. And before we can uh, measure anything, we have to quantify our data. And this is also not, um, uh, obvious either. So here we uh, need the bibliometric methods concerning counting schemes. Uh, and that's also important how we count it. There are different schemes like how we can fractionate data, for instance, or if you do so or not. Indicator choice, normalization, very important. Normalization, we need a, a baseline for benchmarking. Otherwise, we cannot judge in how we have to interpret uh, the our, our indicators and data. Uh, and of course, we need to represent, um, to present and to interpret our findings. Uh, the first step is uh, conceptualization. And here, uh, I would like to, to uh, cite or uh, quote uh, the Committee on Science, Engineering and Public uh, Policy in 2004. Actually, uh, the document is uh, dated 2005. You can find it on the internet. It's a very in important and very interesting document. And here we have three parts uh, I would like to highlight. Uh, the first two parts um, relate to the characteristics, uh, uh, the individuals, the term, uh, the persons who are conducting, um, conducting uh, um, um, uh, interdisciplinary research, namely teams or individuals, uh, not necessarily only teams. The second one is um, um, about uh, knowledge integration, uh, which uh, is done by integrating information, data, techniques, tools, perspective, concepts, and or theories from different disciplines. And the second uh, or third part relates to the goals. Why is uh, 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 interdisciplinary research conducted? namely to solve problems whose solutions are beyond the scope of a single discipline or area or research practice. And I think that's a really a nice uh, description of what in, uh, interdisciplinarity stands for. Uh, this is a, um, a, a figure I published uh, jointly with uh, Cinzia Darayo in 2016, and this shows um, um, yeah, how a researcher is um, embedded in terms of, um, um, yeah, uh, of um, in a cognitive and also in an organizational way. So on the left hand side, you find um, the char characteristics of a researcher and the right hand side of the research process. The left hand side, you can say, okay, a researcher has a certain affiliation which uh, reflects the employment, uh, that's an organizational issue, and uh, also uh, by education, that's the scientific uh, background, the qualification. On the right-hand side, it's, uh, of course, uh, the funding, it's the project um, application, for instance, which is an administrative issue. Why? Because most funding organizations 
uh, use a, an administrative uh, classification system, which is different from the cognitive one used by scientists, uh, which is uh, rather um, related to the output to the publications, patents, uh, which is a cognitive system, uh, like uh, uh, the, the traditional ones uh, you find in libraries or uh, the uh, um, individual paper-based uh, classifications by Medline, for instance, or uh, yeah, the uh, subject classification by Scopus and uh, uh, Web of Science, which is based on um, actually based on on, uh, sub, uh, on journal assignment. So, and this might all be different. For instance, if you take one researcher, you might uh, have four different uh, assignments of that researcher. For instance, in my case, my education is mathematics, um, is probability theory. My affiliation is uh, uh, economics. I'm uh, working at the um, uh, Faculty of Economics and Business. Um, my output is mostly information science. And I have uh, quite some projects, for instance, I had projects in oncology, I had projects in cardiology. Huh? So you can assign me to four different, so what is to be used for uh, studies in, uh, in interdisciplinarity. So we have to decide that. Everything has advantages, disadvantages. Uh, Giovanni Abrano can tell you something about the Italian system. You, you can label scientists according to their affiliation or to their skills. Um, uh, but this is a more or less a regional one, a national one, because you cannot do that for the complete database, because if you would like to do that, uh, you will be faced with problems, for instance, in identifying uh, the scientists based on their names. Uh, for instance, have a look at uh, uh, the uh, ambiguity of um, uh, transcription of Asian names, for instance, which is very hard to, to uh, uh, delineate. No, 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 escape. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Um, uh, this is one point. Uh, uh, and about the uh, qualification, you have uh, mostly no idea about the scientific backgrounds of individuals um, uh, doing research outside your own region where you can, uh, yeah, uh, collect data on that. Okay. Um, so, to give an example of that, I have just uh, taken one paper by me, uh, jointly with uh, uh, Lieven Vaughan and um, uh, Christopher Koch and um, um, uh, Cape Davis from Australia. Uh, so it's a highly, interdis uh, highly interdisciplinary and highly international paper uh, with um, contributors from Canada, from Belgium, uh, US and uh, Australia. So, uh, I have highlighted here, um, uh, something in the title, something in the cited references, and something in the affiliations of uh, the authors. So you can see the blue one stands for the uh, textual subject information. It's a cognitive aspect. The yellow one stands for affiliation, but the organizator, uh, to, uh, organizational aspect. And um, the green one is information sources. It's again a cognitive aspect. Huh? So you can even distinguish between cited references or citations uh, or citation links in general, representing um, uh, cognitive aspects or textual um, information for the same. And you can even combine that. And if you look at uh, the text, then you can identify two subjects. Huh? Misidentified cell lines, uh, uh, HeLa, that is, um, yeah, that is for oncology, and uh, revealed uh, through mining the scientific literature that stands for information science. So if you look at the yellow ones, you find uh, the same uh, situation. Subject one is um, um, the Department for Science and Poli uh, Policy and Scientometrics, um, um, that is. Um, uh, no, sorry, excuse me. It's, it's, uh, uh, it's the Division of Medical Oncology and Children's Medical Research Institute, Cellbank Australia. That's one and two is uh, Faculty Information and Media Studies, uh, Center, um, uh, ACOM, that's uh, at the faculty, uh, and uh, this uh, Department for Science Policy and Scientometrics, which is uh, subject two uh, for information science. And if you look at the references, you find the same picture. Uh, 
information processing and management, for instance. Um, and, and on the other hand, you have the uh, library trends, you have the uh, oncological journals like cell biology, <clears throat> you have the uh, International Journal of Cancer <clears throat> or Cancer Research and over Oncology. <clears throat> so this is uh, information you, you can use for identifying interdisciplinarity. So everything has its advantages and disadvantages. Organizational approach has uh, some disadvantages, which is very hard to, um, uh, to find a good precision because uh, um, on the one hand, on the other hand, um, to find a, a baseline using the complete database with all actors in, in uh, scientific research worldwide. Um, which is easier to solve in the cognitive approach where you can uh, use text mining, text analysis of full documents or at least um, uh, uh, title keyword and abstract, or you can use uh, cited references where you have the complete database you can um, uh, screen so, uh, for, for interdisciplinarity. So, um, um, but whatever you use, the methodology remains the same. Huh? The methods you apply to analyze the data can be the same. Doesn't matter which uh, approach you use. So um, I skipped a bit. So uh, in our present studies, we use uh, the cognitive uh, approach. We use cited references, uh, which are individually assigned to subject. And that has a lot of um, advantages, you can uh, uh, use uh, the standard measures, for instance, of distinct components like variety and disparity, which has been introduced or used at least at, uh, by Sterling already in uh, 1994. You can, after that, you can even look at collaboration of scientists active in these uh, different uh, disciplines. Huh? You can also uh, have a look at the collaboration analysis. You can conduct one. <coughs> Um, um, and uh, you have another advantage, you can also have a look at information flow of interdisciplinary research. You can not only look at the knowledge at the sources that are integrated in this research, you can also look who is benefiting from interdisciplinary research, who is citing that. Huh? Is it again interdisciplinary research or is it in, uh, cited by specialized fields, for instance? Huh? That's also an interesting aspect. Okay about uh, subject classification. It's not necessary to talk a lot about that. Uh, we use that we, uh, we have developed in, um, in Leuven um, <clears throat> with 15 subject fields, uh, 74 disciplines uh, um, built uh, upon the 200, about 250 web of science subject categories. <clears throat> and here we come to the granularity, of course, eh? at which level we look at interdisciplinarity. So, you can, of course, say we go to the lowest level and we um, look at topic interdisciplinarity, but is that really interesting? For instance, uh, one example is um, stochastic geometry. Huh? It's mathematics. It's, uh, yeah, it's a probability theory, actually. Is that interdisciplinary? Huh? It's, of course, interdisciplinary between geometry and uh, stochastics or probability theory, but is that really so interesting to us because it's mathematics actually. Yeah? To most, uh, it's, uh, you have a lot of such uh, topic interdisciplinarity in many fields, but practically all research is uh, at such a low level is interdisciplinary, of course. Um, on the other hand, uh, at the highest level, you have the field level, you just look at uh, medical sciences and physics or chemistry, for instance, which is uh, the other extreme. And what we have done, we looked uh, at uh, the distance. Uh, we created a distance matrix, a cognitive distance matrix between the different fields, disciplines, categories. And what we found is, is the mean value and the minimum distance, huh? the minimum similarity, sorry, the maximum distance. <coughs> For instance, the minimum similarity was, uh, or the, 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 the uh, topic, or the subject category with the uh, lowest similarity with all the others was uh, poetry, yeah? which is plausible, but um, that was also the lowest level. 
at the discipline level, it was pure mathematics. At the highest level, it was geosciences. And if you look at the mean, we found uh, discipline is about uh, 0 0.23, which is an angel of uh, about uh, 80 degrees. So this is still okay. But um, at uh, the category level, it's, it's almost uh, yeah, rectangular huh? with uh, 0 0.14. So that's uh, certainly too low from uh, the viewpoint of bibliometrics, but also from the cognitive view. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, if we are looking at topic uh, interdisciplinarity, that's for most purposes not so exciting. So we decided to go for the disciplines. Uh, that's just an overview. You see here are the um, 15 uh, major fields and the 74 sub uh, subfields, the disciplines, so to speak. And we have here uh, three uh, major fields in the social sciences and humanities, uh, about six in the uh, life sciences, uh, chemistry, physics, geosciences, engineering, um, and that's it. And uh, that's uh, just a visualization of the structure of science according to these uh, 74. That's the Web of Science database for uh, 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 for 20 year uh, period. And then you see here in the uh, um, in the east you find uh, physics and chemistry. In the west, uh, northwest you find uh, medical sciences, life sciences. In the southwest you find uh, um, uh, social sciences and um, humanities and in the very center you find uh, biology and agriculture and engineering to the uh, more to the east okay um now uh, once we decided uh, for this uh, granularity we uh, uh, look at the quantification and measurement and uh, this is actually a standard we use uh, to measure uh, uh, these are the hill type uh, true diversity and the leicester cobalt disparity the one thing uh, shows you how, um, dif how many different uh, uh, disciplines are involved in the research. And um, uh, the second one shows you how different they are based on the, uh, the similarity or the distance matrix, okay? Uh, you find uh, the background of the literature has been tackled by many uh, um, researchers in bibliometrics. Um, are here referred to the paper by Lin Zhang and uh, all in 2016, where we have given some evidence of uh, the um, yeah of uh, the advantages of these uh, two um, measures. There is also a third one, is balanced, shows how balanced um, these uh, uh, fields are uh, represented in, in, in this kind of knowledge uh, integration. But uh, we always warn that uh, please do not combine them. There is no single all in one measure that reflects all aspects. Uh, so you lose a lot of information if you combine these uh, indicators and you create a composite indicator of something like that. And that's also interesting. Now we have some, um, some, uh, uh, some numbers, so to speak, and uh, they, they use different scales. Huh? They are differently scaled, huh? the two indicators, for instance. Uh, how to to um, find some kind of standard, huh? and uh, here we use the characteristic scores and scales that has been developed for citations. Actually, it's a self um, it's a self adjusting method uh, where you uh, can define. For instance, we usually use four classes. The least class is the poorly cited. Then you have the fairly cited. Then you have the uh, yeah, at the end you have the outstandingly cited uh, uh, class. And you can use the same uh, thing for uh, for interdisciplinarity for the two measures we just uh, had to look at uh, right now. And it's parameter free and that's the advantage. So um, uh, that means you have a and it's based on the on the global standard on the standard on the on the on the on the baseline of, of, the, of the database. So that means um, you can uh, really uh, is assign each um, individual result to its class. So you can say, for instance, there is a low interdisciplinarity, there is a fair interdisciplinarity, or there is a high interdisciplinarity. Okay. And uh, just uh, to to have some kind of validation, we also made a test using the two uh, the variety and um, 
um, the disparity, and we found it's uh, almost in, uncorrelated. So we, we really need, need to um, indicate that. So it might happen that you have a, a high uh, variety, but a low disparity. That means the knowledge integration happens or takes place in fields that are very similar. Huh? And you have also the other way around, uh, low uh, interdisciplinarity, but there are two fields that are very far from each other. Huh? So, and here we come to uh, the example, I hope I'm still in time, yes, of uh, philosophy. Um, so, Paishan will uh, tell you more about that, but more from the viewpoint of isolation. Huh? So, here we look at interdisciplinarity. So it's the same data set. Huh? We have a, a bit more than 5,000 documents published in uh, 17 topics in um, in 18 year um, uh, period. Uh, and these uh, papers have been retrieved from the field papers database. We have matched them with the Web of Science uh, uh, core collection. Sorry, it's not all, it's core collection. Uh, uh, and that resulted, the match resulted in uh, nearly 2,400 index Web of Science papers because not all of the papers are cited in the database, okay? And about 2,000 papers could be analyzed for interdisciplinarity. That means uh, what we need is, of course, uh, information uh, because sometimes you don't have information about, uh, uh, you don't have uh, reference cited references or you don't have an abstract, you don't have uh, things like that. And um, or the the uh, uh, there must be at least articles or reviews. Uh, we have skipped uh, editorials and uh, and uh, things that are not uh, citable actually. Um, and and uh, the CSS standard for citation classes usually that's an approach. Eh? It's a very stable method. Is uh, for citations, it's about seventy percent of all papers are fully cited. 21 are fairly cited, and the highly cited is uh, subdivided. It's about 9% uh, is uh, 6.5, and uh, for the outstanding ones is 2.5%. Uh, you could say uh, it's, uh, you can also use percentiles, but with the safe, it's adjusting. <coughs> and for philosophy, sample we found for disparity, slightly different. Um, but it's the uh, Closely following the scheme with uh, yeah, between 60 70 percent uh, low um, interdisciplinarity, about 20 percent uh, yeah, fair interdisciplinarity, and high interdisciplinarity is higher, of course, um, because uh, this interdisciplinarity approach is always, uh, um, uh, I would not say, uh, but it's prone to, uh, to outliers. That's the problem, and that um, you have always. Uh, some uh, fields uh, included, disciplines included, on one hand, that are uh, not typical of that research, but uh, by any way it's cited, or you have a scientist uh, who is uh, also involved in that research by a background that is not uh, belonging to that research. You have to be a bit careful. I come to that later. And on the other hand, also, it's uh, ever prone because of the database. Uh, all databases. And here I would like to say that it applies both to Scopus and to Web of Science, and Open Alex is even worse. So uh, the quality of data is uh, limited. Uh, there is a strong um, uh, validation for uh, Scopus and the Web of Science, but there are outliers. Huh? There are simply wrong references. Huh? And we looked also at Open Alex, uh, the reference the citation has really a problem there. <coughs> So this is what, uh, for the baseline, you cannot solve. Huh? You cannot check all the references of all papers indexed in all databases, and that's impossible. <clears throat> and here, uh, some examples. So if we look at, um, maybe I can, uh, maybe, just a moment. Can I edit? Yeah. Maybe it's like that. So you see uh, the topics, uh, we, you see the categories uh, we have here. Uh, Paishan will tell you more about that. It's like uh, value theory, it's philosophy of, uh, of science, yeah. It's uh, uh, language epistemology, mind and metaphysics. And here you have some topics like uh, moral uh, st status of animals, um, species, animal rights, uh, uh, zombies and conceivability problem. 
uh, exclusion problem, mathematical structure of quants. So if you look at these things, you um, see that uh, some of the topics already indicate kind of interdisciplinarity, and really you find it in, in the uh, measures, uh, for instance, if you have a look at the titles, uh, then you really, uh, the title reveals already this kind of interdisciplinarity or lacking this interdisciplinarity. The double dose of uh, double effect, uh, there is a low interdisciplinarity, low uh, variety and low um, uh, disparity. On the other hand, you have uh, both is high, for instance, in the in the value theory at the edge of humanity, human stem cells, uh, uh, chimeras and uh, uh, moral status, that uh, already is obvious from the title. Or if you look at uh, 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 the uh, animal, in just a moment, uh, there was a, uh, such a, a nice title. But you see also that uh, you have some uh, uh, documents with high uh, variety but low uh, disparity, like uh, species are individuals, uh, the German tradition. Uh, that is uh, an example for that, or the other way around, uh, they have a, a, a moderate uh, variety, like uh, the, the prior probabilities in this one, is it? Yes. And the high, uh, a high disparity. Um, that's the topic species. Um, and but uh, you, you see it uh, from the journal title, you see it from the title, and if you make a text analysis, you can even validate it. So uh, this uh, is, uh, shows that uh, uh, there is indeed some interdisciplinarity and not, uh, not only um, uh, a very limited one in our sample. And uh, um, that is just as a, a small example for that. Um, some issues and limitations. Huh? And here we have to say, and here I come to granularity. Um, um, variety is very, very sensitive to granularity. So if you go to top topic interdisciplinarity, then of course it, interdisciplinarity is, is growing, of course. Variety is so, uh, growing because you have, you have a, an integration of many, many uh, small topics. Huh? Uh, disparity is less sensitive because it's based on a, on a baseline, uh, on a distant matrix already, where this is a bit uh, 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 cleaned already, so to speak, but variety is very, very sensitive to, to granularity. Um, and uh, variety and disparity take values in different ranges. Uh, they have a different scale, and that means uh, you need a, a kind of standardization and normalization for the indicators to make them comparable, at least like we have done with the four classes. Eh? You can say, otherwise we have just some numbers and you cannot really say uh, what these numbers means in terms of the extent of uh, variety or um, uh, disparity. Um, and uh, if it comes to individual IDR scores, eh? Um, the, the, you always find these well-known issues related to evaluative micro-level studies because we always come to micro. Huh? Um, if we go to the extremely high interdisciplinarity, even of a large sample with, with thousands of publications, it's only two persons, so it drops immediately to the mi uh, micro-level. Huh? And we had a nice paper in 2013 uh, with uh, Paul Walters about uh, the do's and don'ts in, in, at the micro-level. You have highly skewed distributions underlying the IDI measures that are prone to database errors as well, and you have to obey the rules of um, micro and nano analysis, um, um, uh, which uh, has its own uh, problems, uh, and that has to be discussed. So there is, uh, yeah. And finally, uh, the uh, you need in any case a proper uh, quality assurance and validation for everything you do at that level, huh? uh, not only because of the micro level uh, effect, but also uh, because of uh, the data quality, which uh, uh, requires some uh, yeah, filtering out uh, yeah, false positives, so to speak. Um, so um, the question is uh, um, uh, what kind of uh, 
of method of approach should be used, uh, the cognitive approach or organizational or administrative approach, everything can be used in practice. Everything can be used and uh, tells you something and maybe different aspects. Huh? If you look at uh, the skills of scientists or the affiliation of scientists, it will tell you something different than the cognitive aspect. For instance, you might have a look uh, at, uh, at uh, computer scientists that work at the Department of Sociology. Huh? Um, but it's already, is that already interdisciplinary? I don't know. So you might need a different aspect to analyze to uh, get a more uh, complete picture, so to speak, of interdisciplinarity. Uh, citation context would offer uh, the best of all the words because you do not only look at the references cited, you do not only look at the textual uh, aspect, you look also the context of citations. Huh? Not only in the canonical uh, sections, you really look in which context a document is cited. And this alone gives you a hint on interdisciplinarity. Is it cited in the usual context, in the standard context, in a new context, for instance? Huh? Uh, and uh, this is something that uh, needs to be developed uh, because that's not uh, so frequently applied at the moment, I'm afraid. Okay. Here um, uh, is a list of uh, the literature I used uh, for that. Um, uh, and it gives you more uh, uh, literature and information about uh, interdisciplinarity studies in, in bibliometrics. And that's it actually. But I wanted to show you something and that's the granularity again, because, yeah. That's uh, uh, granularity is in, uh, in science and in, in bibliometrics in, in, um, in science in general and bibliometrics in particular is a very important issue, not only in terms of uh, defining, for instance, uh, the level of uh, interdisciplinarity topic, field, or discipline, or subject assignment whatsoever, but uh, it is always, I see it and I feel it also in many studies uh, that researchers tend to go to uh, increase granularity to have more details and to have better details and more and more and more. But, uh, um, uh, these are two perspectives, holistics and detail view. And here, right, uh, I like to cite Michelangelo Antonioni's film, Blow Up, the movie, you might know. Huh? Uh, it's from 1966 as an allegory picture of uncertainty and ambiguity where, and this is uh, what we have written uh, and uh, adopted from Lehmann, actually, the attempt to gain more information and lucidity to get evidence finally resulted in the destruction of the detailed structure, just leaving even more room for obscurity, imagination, and speculation. Eh? So you have a counter counterproductive effect if you you lose uh, the, the the global picture, you lose the picture and the perspective, uh, you lose in 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 you are lost in your details. Um. um and uh, this is something uh, that is uh, another duality, so to speak, to find uh, the balance between a holistic picture and uh, the uh, richness of details to be able to, to, to analyze at uh, almost all level you need. Um, 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 so uh, this is actually what I would like uh, to use at my, uh, to close uh, my, my presentation. And I thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much. So we have now, I think, 10 okay. minutes or something more for uh, questions and answers. So please, uh, you're supposed to come here. Yeah. So I've been engaging with uh, similar measures since very recently. Yeah. So if my question comes across as naive, it's probably because it is. Uh, this said, um, I was thinking how it would be difficult for me to start working on an interdisciplinary project or write an interdisciplinary paper. Because to do so, we need to acquire knowledge that basically allows me to venture outside my domain of expertise. And it would be easier if I came up with somebody possibly from a, an adjacent field or something. And if I extend this argument a bit, uh, namely, uh, I would conclude that larger teams will find it easier to write inter interdisciplinary work than smaller teams. So my question, are these measures tracking interdisciplinarity or team size? So is this a valid concern? Yeah. 
Um, there are actually some uh, papers and uh, um, <clears throat> who, um, uh, in which um, uh, uh, factors influencing interdisciplinarity were analyzed, and the team size was one. Huh? And it was interesting to see that uh, the team size is uh, is uh, there was no um, uh, how can I say no significant. Uh, uh, Confirmation of uh, the hypothesis that the team size is really always influencing in the disciplinarity. Um, of course, um, it is more likely to have an interdisciplinary. Uh, and you have also to to keep in mind that several uh, fields have uh, uh, different standards uh, in terms of team size and authorship. Like, have a look at hyper authorship and hierarchy physics, for instance, astrophysics or astronomy, where the standard, of course. I uh, have a look at the humanities and uh, some social sciences there, or even in mathematics, pure mathematics, there people are still working alone. Eh? Um, uh, so uh, this is field specific on one hand. So, and it's very hard to separate here the factors, eh? the field specific factor from the interdisciplinarity factor. Um, and again, we come back to granularity here. Mm -hmm. yeah? <laughs> um, um, but uh, there was no uh, clear indication that the team size is really uh, uh, yeah, coming with the higher disciplinarity. Okay, thank you. Other questions? Um, thank you very much. So um, I wanted to ask you to develop a little bit more the topic of data quality underlying this analysis. Because now I'm conducting with a colleague of mine uh, a study on the communication flows between philosophy and neuroscience, right? And we're doing that at journal level. So we are trying to figure out which are the journals in which the communication the exchange between the two fields is more evident. And we are basically analyzing the kind of cited references that appear in the journals. At a certain moment, um, one of the journals popped up it was a very weird journal for our perspective. And then I went into detail and I discovered that in Web of Science, lots of cited references were just wrongly attributed to the journal. Or I think the articles, the citing articles were from a biomedical journal. Yeah. They were attributed to a journal in aesthetics. And then clearly it sent out, but the, for the wrong reason, because yeah. there was an error in database. So I wanted to ask how you, um, how you track the validity and the quality of the data. Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, data quality is a, is a central issue here. Um, on one hand, you, uh, as an information source, references as an information source, um, become less uh, useful as the time elapses yeah? normally, because um, uh, there is a trend of uh, having some standard papers, uh, standard literature. Uh, if you come to books, standard books, for instance, that are cited everywhere. Yeah? Uh, uh, so uh, if you have a, a, a window of five years, for instance, uh, then you can be sure that, of course, you miss some references, maybe some uh, references that might uh, result in interdisciplinarity because these old references uh, have become important by any reason. Huh? So you have uh, you need a balance uh, to look at uh, mostly the more recent um, uh, references which are, which are stronger as the uh, information conveyors, so to speak, as relevant information conveyors, and the older ones uh, which are, yeah, background liter literature, uh, literature or as an introduction uh, into the uh, context of that research or something like that. Um, yes, uh, this is uh, the correct citations uh, or the correct references, but you still have the wrong ones. Yeah? Um, uh, and uh, you, 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 you need to filter that out, if possible. I, I mean, for the, for the benchmark, it's, it's uh, almost impossible, but for the relevant papers you analyze, you can do so. You can correct that. Uh, and that's the reason why I mentioned that citation context would be better, because then you look into the paper and you look at, uh, at the uh, citation in the paper, and then you see if that is really correct, if that really is used for this context or not. Yes. yes. Thank you, Wolfgang. Um, can you go back to the slide where you were looking at interdisciplinarity? I'll tell you which one it is. 
Yeah, I have the numbers. So yeah. made a thought to my mind here. No, nope, this one, one more back, one more back. No, where you're defining interdisciplinarity, I think. Conceptualizations, manifest. Oh, the synthetical, that oh. one, analytical, synthetical. Okay, so here, sort of, I, I was thinking, um, you mentioned methods, mathematical models, but you don't talk about theory. Uh, yeah, theory as well. I go uh, devices also. Eh? Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah. I it, but I yeah. So I thought, yeah. you know, there is some kinds of interdisciplinarity attached to theory, where theories are borrowed yeah. all yeah. over the place, right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah, and um, and actually, I one of the things I found, and it'll come out also in my talk later this afternoon, is that. Um, when theories are borrowed, sometimes if it's too interdisciplinary, they tend to think it's not a good concept. Yeah. This is, you know, you yeah. can borrow methods because yeah. it's sound, but if you if too if the theory is attached to too many things, too many disciplines, it's been criticized as not yeah. being a good concept. So yeah, it's, a, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah, you're right. It's not only mathematical models and models in general. I just mentioned, but, uh, for example, huh? Uh, but uh, it's also, I just want to say, uh, devices is also important. And yeah. there's also a feedback if the devices have sometimes to be modified for that purpose. Eh? Yes. Because uh, they, they have been designed for other things. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and that's, uh, so it's more complex. We can discuss that really for hours. Also the theories, which is very exciting, um, the effect on uh, theories in an analytical kind an of... Analytical uh, yeah. type of... Yeah. I guess borrowing of yeah, theories, yeah, yeah. you would say. Yes, uh, for instance, if you look at uh, the early uh, bibliometrics or scientometrics, there are uh, many theories from uh, borrowed from um, um, from from physics that's been used or yes, from the exactly uh, epidemic uh, yeah. model of uh, of uh, spread of information, for instance, exactly. or or decay of information, yes. something like that. Yeah. That's more than a model. That's, that's what I was theory. thinking. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. The last question. Thank you very much for the talk. It was super interesting. So I, I have a um, question about the last point you made about granularity, right? And I was wondering if to find out what is the best level of granularity, we could somehow maybe resort to some qualitative data, maybe interviewing scientists to ask them what is what do they perceive as interdisciplinary? I don't know if this has been made already, or if there is some. I, I'm really new to the field, so if maybe, maybe you, it's something that everybody knows. But yeah. uh, yes, uh, validation by experts is very important. Eh? By the users and experts, is very important. Um, for the user, is um, it's important because uh, the purpose of the exercise. Uh, you have a user who has somebody who uses uh, results. So you have uh, to take that into account. And of course, for the validity, you have to ask experts. So uh, the perception of interdisciplinarity is, is a very odd thing. Eh? If you ask uh, uh, researchers, uh, it might vary. Eh? I know a mathematician who said, oh, I'm doing applied mathematics because I'm uh, applying analysis in, uh, and I do not know which field of mathematics. So I said, no, I'm really interested in applied uh, science, but not in, in, in uh, interdisciplinarity within mathematics. Uh, so uh, the individual perception is very different. And if you ask a scientist uh, um, uh, if their work is interdisciplinary, you might get a biased answer because uh, they find it important to have interdisciplinary research and they would interpret it as interdisciplinary, even if it is not so strong interdisciplinary. So it's, 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 uh, there's a subjective bias a bit. If you ask, uh, you need a really huge example or a huge sample on a, 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 the same set to have some more objective uh, results. Um, but of course, uh, expert uh, opinion is very important here. Thank you very much. Thank you again, Professor Pennington.